Ayan, welcome dears again. So uh, for the continuation of our uh, lecture on swab specimens culture. And we'll now continue with the wound specimens, okay? So for the first one, for open lesions, okay? Kung open ra ang wound, you remove again superficial flora by decontamination before collecting and uh, from the advancing margin or base. So as, again, uh, not a picture later sa open lesion. I'll just show uh, as a dapit, okay? And for dry encrusted lesions, kanarang na uga na, uh, or kanang murag nag, nag start nag heal, culture is not recommended unless na japoy na na or na ay mugawas gyapo na extra date, okay? Alright. Um, for unrupture, for closed abscess, okay? It's a specimen site of choice again because again for anaerobes, alright? Uh, collect extra date and a sample of the abscess wall. So you aspirate the, uh, the aspirate the fluid inside the abscess or the pus, and then you also collect samples sa uh, kilid sa imong abscess wall okay all right ayan and for open abscess decontaminate the lesions same row with open lesions you get from the advancing margin or base of the lesion all right okay and for burn wounds kung gikan og burn culture daw is done only again after excessive cleaning and debridement when you say debridement you remove the damaged tissues all right so kato mga nasunog na tissue imo sang tangtangon all right and it cleans sa ang area uh, and biopsy specimens ang ang site ang, ang recommended na specimen and quantitative culture may or may not be of significant depending the significance depending na sa lab depending pud sa uh, request sa physician you can actually quantitate ang culture okay all right ayan and uh, specimen of choice again for open lesions taken from the advancing margin or base of the lesion and not just Pus. Okay, so if na ay nana, tangtangon sa nibong nana, okay, until maklear na ang area sa lesion, and then you take na the sample from, again, the advancing margin and the base. Okay, so here's a sample of debridement, as you can see, gipang tangtang ni mga na, na sunog na tissue or na damage. And this is an example of an open lesion. Ayan, as you can see, di ba na yung mga nana. So tangtangon sa nanimo, and then you swab diri sa kilid. Ayan, and also sa sulod. Alright, muna siya ang pasabot sa advancing margin and the base of the lesion. Okay? So, you, dilira dapat ang nana, okay? Dapat ang sulud yun mismo ay ang kilid, advancing margin. Alright? Okay. That's for open lesions and for wound specimens. Now, for the collection method, uh, for unrupted abscess, as you can see, ang point lang yun niya is dilita mo swab because again, we are after for anaerobes. Okay? Because unrupted, wala pa siya ni buto na abscess. Okay? And then, atong, ang buhato na na is excise, meaning hiwaan, and then mukha kang syringe, and then i-drain. And, kuha on tong fluid, uh, which is apil sa transport, dapat in anaerobic transport, and also a portion of the abscess wall. Okay? Because again, we're looking more on um, on anaerobes. Okay? Alright. Ayan. Next, for open lesions and abscesses, still the same. Um, Ang point ra kay open man siya, so it's well contaminated with your uh, normal flora. So we remove as much as me, as much as possible mga normal flora by decontaminating. And of course, dili na tamo look after anaerobes dere. Kaya because again, it's open lesion, so exposed na siya to the air, uh, oxygen. So dili na motubo ang anaerobes ana. All right, uh, remove exudate again and firmly sample the base again or margin. All right, and submit the swab in aerobic transport medium, whether it's towards or a miss. Alright. And for burn wounds, still the same. They bright the area. Uh, if na exudate, muto siya imong iswab. And then submit the sample for aerobic culture uh, only. Alright. So as you can see, kay burn wounds man eh. So if na mga nana or something, then that could be dito ang infection. Different na siya sa open lesions na you don't want na pas rin na. Ah. Because if open lesions, it means na uh, munang open lesion kay ang skin mismo giatake na sa imong kagaw. Alright. So it's best na kwa oni mo uh, sa advancing margin yun and sa base of the lesion para mas makuha ang um, pathogen okay all right and submit of course for burn wounds ang specimen of choice with is biopsy tissue okay because again for burn wounds mang good we're not really looking after the main cause mang good of the wound is not bacterial it's burn so we want to make sure na i biopsy yun siya kay para makabalo kung unsa extent sa damage okay because the initial again infection is not caused by bacteria, it's just caused by, uh, by, by burn, alright, by exposure to fire or anything that could burn the wound, burn the skin, alright, so munang biopsy of, uh, biopsy of the wound ato ang choice, alright, and we're looking after la mga uh, infections caused by it, 
na mga ano na mga uh, secondary infections caused by bacteria. All right? Okay. Ayan. That's for wound specimens. Now we go now to uh, uh, still collection for pustules or vesicles. So kana mga ginagmay na parang abscess. So as you can see, mulantaw tag intact pustules. So push po, uh, Pustules, 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 whatever. <laughs> Intact na pustule. And what happened is ato siyang i-collect ng fluid. Atong i-unroof, meaning atong kuwaon tong murag uh, iyahang covering. And then kuwaon tong fluid and basal cells by rotating the swab and vigorously in the pustule. If dako ang large, uh, if dako ang large, ha? Ha? <laughs> Nabari gamay na large mark. Oh my gosh, sabaw na kayo ko guys, sorry. If large ang pustule, what happens, mugamit ang 18 gauge na needle so mas dako na buslot na needle and then we uh, aspirate uh, or we puncture it all right and if gulang na or medyo old na ang lesion na nanay mga uh, suwa nanay mga scab or mga crust tangtangon nato siya moist the base of the lesion and then swab japon with pre-moistened sterile swab okay so here's an example of a post uh, post juice yan mura sag actually mura sag acne char <laughs> pero dilig siya acne pero kanang ano siya ba uh, mura siya ginagmay na mga butod-butod, yes, na naay murag infection ng mga nana, alright? And this is a tuberculin syringe, as you can see, gamay ra kayo siya. So, kani atong i-change diri, ang needle. So, we use an 18-gauge needle. Okay. And now, we go now to the different culture, colonial characteristics of some pathogens na atong ma-encounter in wound specimens. Now, for wound specimens, daghan kayong pwedeng pathogens, okay? And most of them are uh, caused by kaning tulo, uh, by, by of course, your staph and the normal skin flora, alright? And nai uban jako na mga enterics, okay? Alright. And uh, first cause is of course staph aureus. So on back, muna tumulan tawon. Always take note, it's creamy, buttery looking, and most of the colonies are beta hemolytic. Another cause of your um, mga, you know, secondary infections to wounds or wound kano gyud is Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And on back, na siya karakteristik na metallic sheen. Please take note. Basta gani metallic sheen on back. Okay, that's Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Pero greenish metallic sheen on EMB, kinsa na? E. coli. Okay, please take note ha, different na siya na media. Pero metallic sheen on BAP, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and flat spreading colonies. And we also have uh, an example of an anaerobe. This is uh, QT bacterium, di ba? Sana all cute. <laughs> Sana all QT. QT bacterium acnes. Okay, so actually ayang old name is Propyone. Uh, bacterium. Pero karon it's already QT bacterium acnes. Old name yang propyone bacterium. Okay? Uh, and of course, nasa pangalan na, it's usually involved in the uh, inflammatory process of acne. Okay? So, on uh, on on BAP, ang si acnes daw kay white to gray and may become yellowish with age. Okay? Alright, so muna sa itong lantawan na mga culture characteristics on our uh, wound specimens. Okay? Alright, so that's for wound specimens. We now go to your ear specimens. So, usually for ear specimens, we are looking for those that cause otitis media or middle ear infection. Okay? Um, and still the same swab is not recommended because, again, of external contamination from ear canal, uh, from the external ear canal flora contamination. Okay? So, as you can see, di ba, kabate mo tanda na lang, disclaimer, good, swab is not recommended. Swab is not recommended. Pero, <clears throat> um, in this cases na, you know, layo ang patient from the lab or like, um, mas convenient magud siya, we still opt for the use of swab. Okay? Just follow lang your proper procedure like decontamination and transport medium. Right? Okay. Specimen of choice is still the aspirate from behind the tympanum or eardrum. So, if na fluid behind the eardrum, so mas okay yun ang uh, aspirate na to, to siya. Okay? A small swab may only be used if ni rupture ng eardrum and nagsugod na ogawas ang fluid. So, pwede na ang swab atong gamiton para i-collect ang fluid if ni rupture ng eardrum. But if not, we use, uh, we perform tympanosynthesis. So, when you say tympanosynthesis, tympano or tympanum eardrum, synthesis is aspirate. So, you aspirate the fluid sa imuhang eardrum. So, number one is, of course, you clean, uh, you give daw anesthesia because the incision is painful. Sakit daw siya na procedure. Okay? And then after what the doctor does, ang doctor mo, mo, mo perform ani, yang i-incise ang, ang, ang eardrum because again, the fluid is behind the eardrum. So, um, i-incise niyang eardrum and then i tube na ipansak. Alright? And then, i-drain na ang, ang, ang fluid likod sa eardrum. And then, ibutan siya og sterile swab. Or pwede siyang i-aspirate, again, using a syringe, and then ibutang siya in an anaerobic transport medium. Alright. 
And for external ear infections, otitis externa, still the same lang, i-clean rang ear canal with disinfectant. And you rinse it with saline, okay? Rinse saline and then swab tong area briskly. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Allergies, okay. All right, ayan. So that's for uh, ear specimen. And this picture is tympanocentesis. So as you can see, this is the eardrum. So liquid sa eardrum na fluid. And then after pag incise, you insert the tube and then you start to aspirate the fluid behind the eardrum. Okay? All right. So for um, culture, uh, colonial characteristics of the most common causes of otitis uh, media, of course, ang pinakaunang good is strep pneumo, strep pneumonia on BAP. All right? So yan characteristic, again, large zone of alpha hemolysis and dome-shaped colonies, dome-shaped, dome. Dome-shaped colonies on young culture. But if um, old culture daw, because of autolysis, ma, ma, mo, mo, ano siya, mo disintegrate ang dome. All right? Mawala yung dome-shaped appearance. If old na, because of autolysis. All right? And of course, second most common cause of uh, otitis media is H. influenzae, Haemophilus influenzae, chocolate agar, again, moist, smooth, convex, distinct, kasi ang odor, mousy or bleach-like. And the last, uh, third most common, di ba, is Morexella catarhalis. As you can see, yung appearance daw, wagon wheel appearance, and yung colonies are described as hockey puck. When you say hockey puck, mag good, madrag ni mong colonies, like mad madrag yun ni mong colonies uh, all the way sa imuhang, kung idrag ni mong na siya, mumove siya. So, mara siya hockey puck, kanang ginagamit for hockey. Okay, that's for Morexella catarhalis, di ba? Uh, and usually, otitis media is common daw in mga infants and children na infection. Okay? All right. Ayan. So after ear, the specimens, we now go to the eye specimens. So for the eye specimens, still the same sa wound, you don't use or don't, do not put eye lang yun. You butang kung sa na specimen. Is it conjunctival? Is it a corneal sample ba? Yeah, Etc. You have to be specific. Um, in serious eye infections, if bacteria ang cause, chocolate agar daw ang generally uh, well accepted na medium. All right? And the method of specimen collection depends on your um, eye infection. Okay. Uh, bilateral conjunctivitis, meaning inflammation of the conjunctiva, kanang white sa inyong eyes, uh, or like kanang dili dapit sa basa conjunctiva. <laughs> uh, if bilateral, meaning doa ka buok eyes ang naa, pwede rang usaka ay atong e culture. All right. And conjunctival specimens, dapat doa ka swab, one for culture and one for gram staining. Pero if you want gram staining better results, um, better results daw if corneal scrapings ang gamiton. Okay. I'll never walk corneal charot lang. Sweet again, charot lang. Okay. Many specimens still the same with your, uh, no, it should be plated at uh, bedside because these specimens uh, easily can easily dry out. Pas pas kaysa mudray. So, mas okay na i plate yun siya bedside. Alright? Okay. And anaerobic transport when necessary, but not for conjunctival because your conjunctival specimens are well exposed sa, you know, makita na siya, exposed po siya sa air. So, it's not possible na the anaerobes will grow there. But some specimens of the eye na medyo lib-lib or like conducive for an anaerobe to grow, so pwede tayong magamit o anaerobic transport. Okay? So, here's an example of the parts of the eye. So, your conjunctiva lines the eyelid and surface of the eye. So, kana siya usually. Okay? All right. So for culture, what we look after lang yun is kani. Uh, so dumonas eruginosa because this is considered to be the most common cause of uh, contact lens associated keratitis or inflammation of your eye, de ba? And for causative agents mang good of your eye, dagan kayong uh, infection sa eye, and it causes uh, they are caused by a lot of organisms food. Not, e not some of them are not even bacteria. So kani example, of course, if makademember mo sa yung para. Amoebic keratitis, and a good example of the causative agent of that is Acanthamoeba species, most common isolate. So these are your Acanthamoeba trophozoites, and these are your E. coli. So they are feeding sa E. coli because they eat the E. coli, alright? So again, for eye specimens and eye infections, the ka ayong eye infections, and these are also caused by a lot of organisms put. Not some of them, even not bacteria. Example, Acanthamoeba, which is an amoeba, a parasite, okay? All right, so that's for um, your eye specimens, okay. And for the last type of uh, swab specimens, your, your urethral and penile specimens. Your urethra now is the most commonly um, cultured genital site sa male, all right, ang urethra, all right. And again, still the same, we need to remove the external skin flora of the urethral meatus. When I say meatus or meatus, kato ng buslot sa inyuhang 
urethra. Example, buslot sa penis or buslot sa imong urethra for females, right? So, muna siya, ang buslot, miatos, alright? So, we have to remove external skin flora pa rin because we don't want this uh, contamination, alright? Same sa pag-prepare sa imong urine specimen. For midstream clean catch, we, we wash the miatos or katong buslot, alright? And if kailangan mang gani, pwede yung if dili, if dili mo gawas ang discharge, example sa penis, uh, pwede na mo insert og swab, 2 cm inside the urethra, and uh, ato na siyang i-rotate gamay. Alright? Or if mo mutulo na yung itself ang um, pus, pwede na siya i-collect. Okay? Alright. Muna siya specimen of choice. So for collection method, again, express exudate from urethra, collected on a swab, dapat na transport medium. If dili mang gani, uh, uh, if makakakolek na ka sa swab, i-roll ni mo siya over um, a slide for microscopic exam. Because we also examine that for gram stain. Alright? And if unavailable ang extra date, mo insert na ka og swab to 2 cm. Yeah, inside the urethra. Gently rotate and then remove. And then of course, inoculate the specimen in medium as soon as possible. And place the specimen at CO2 atmosphere for 35 degrees Celsius. At 35 degrees Celsius. Why? Because what we are looking for is nasira gonorrhea. Alright? Because again, that's a common cause of STD, gonorrhea. Tulo, right? Okay. Ayan. So, uh, for plating, of course, um, since we are looking for end gonorrhea, and as mentioned, it's really sensitive, so direct plating is recommended. Meaning, bedside plating is really recommended. But if dili mangani, then a transport medium can be used. Alright? And these transport medium can come in the different forms. One of that is the Jembeck. When say meaning sa Jembeck, James E. Martin, Biological Environmental Chamber, Jembeck, pwede pong Gonopac or Transgrow. Now, these uh, culture media, they have CO2 daw, atmosphere, or they provide the CO2 atmosphere that, uh, you know, that help or that provide optimal conditions until maabot ang specimen sa laboratory. Okay? Alright. Ayan. And of course, the swab containing must be rolled in a Z pattern on example sa Jembeck medium. Dapat Z pattern. And once maabot na niya sa lab, dapat ibutang niya dayon sa 37 degrees Celsius na um, na labrat na incubator. Okay? Alright. Yeah. Or if wala kay Jembeck, pwedeng Amy's medium, pero dapat na ay charcoal. Because again, Amy's medium is cotton. A cotton swab. And recall that cotton are, cotton is toxic to your naysiria. So para dili daw uh, ma-prevent ng toxicity sa cotton, you add charcoal. Okay? So, if ang question on say add para dili matoxikan ang naysiria sa cotton swab, charcoal. Okay? Uling. Alright, ayan. So, if kana siya, Amy's, dapat masubmit siya sa lab as much as possible, as early or as fast as as possible, and dapat plated within 6 hours of collection. Okay? And this is a Jembeck system. As you can see, diba Z and Transgrow. Kasi mura siyang cho chocolate na lamikin ka nun, no? mura siyang Basta mura siyang, mura siyang pudding, no? <laughs> Alright, okay. So, of course, because your um, end gonorrhea, iyahang medium of choice with this chocolate agar. Ayan. So, we now go still to plating. As mentioned, medium of choice for end gonorrhea is chocolate agar. But because end gonorrhea supports a lot of organisms, not only end gonorrhea, so we want to have a selective medium. Na, na chocolate agar pa rin, pero selective na siya for end gonorrhea. That is why we add mga supplements for end gonorrhea. You have vancomycin, all of the special culture medium for your end gonorrhea contain vancomycin, which inhibits gram-positive organisms. Cholestine, which inhibits gram-neg. Uh, your antifungal, which could be uh, anisomycin or amphotericin B, depending on the media. And you have trimethoprim also to inhibit the swarming of proteus. And here are your ayan, special medium for isolation of end gonorrhea. Now, we have... Uh, mga mnemonics, ani. So... You have first is Thayer Martin TM. So of course it contains vancomycin, cholestine, and uh, nistatine, which is for antifungal and trimetho trimethoprim. So that's V C N T. Okay, Thayer Martin. Ang modified Thayer Martin, ang imurang change anak kay. Ah okay. Ah wala siya trimethoprim. Ang Thayer Martin, sorry. Ang modified Thayer Martin sila Japan plus trimethoprim. So M T M. Ang Martin Lewis, ayan, muni siya, V, uh, ang saan akong mnemonic, ani, V, uh, Kant, tama, V, Kant. So, vancomycin, cholestine, anisomycin, and trimethoprim. Ang New York City agar, V, Kant, letter M, V, Kant. Vancomycin, cholestine, amphotericin B, and trimethoprim. 
Now, another thing to remember sa um, NYC, di ba? Amphotericin B. Daghang buildings sa NYC. O, oh, di ba? So, Amphotericin B, daghang buildings sa NYC. O, oh, sa New York City. And you have GC Lec, mas daghan na siya. <laughs> okay, alright. Nailincomycin, cholestine, Amphotericin B, and Shimatoprim. Why is it important? Because, Sa inyong board exam, guys, or some other exams, pangutanan mo, kinsay culture media na kani ang composition? Unsa na, uh, unsa na anti-fungal ang naani na ni Sir Gonery uh, culture medium? So it's important na aware na mo ani nila. Alright? So ang Thayer Martin Gude is katong first three, walay trimetoprim. Vancomycin, cholestine, and nistatine. Ang modified, gimodified siya kagi ada ng trimetoprim. Okay? Your Martin Lewis, V-Cant, an, an isomycin, A-N, New York City, v camped Vancomycin, Colistine, Amphotericin, B, di ba? B, daghang building sa NYC, sa New York City, and Trimetoprim. And you have the gc lac na mas daghan, Lincomycin, Colistine. Alright, so please take note para kakinsa na sila na mga, ano ha, tambal, or kinsa lang gina-suppress. Because again, gina-question po ni sa boards, or some other exams ninyo. Alright? Okay. Ayan. So we now go to the uh, different culture characteristics. So since we are looking for N. gonorrhea, so we'll focus first on N. gonorrhea. Ayan. So um, of course we plate then and chocolate agar. So iyaha is again small, gray to tan in color, translucent, raised, okay, ang colonies. And for gram stain, urethral discharge dapat gram negative intracellular diplococci na daghang uh, polymorphonuclear leukocytes. Now for male exudates magod kung urethral male specimen, if makita ni siya, usually diagnosed na, diag, diagnosis na na or madiagnose na siya with gonorrhea. But for females man good, we don't rely on this because there are a lot of uh, Neisseria species that exhibit the same morphology, na normal flora ra. That's why we go to culture. But for males daw, this result, urethral discharge, gram stain, is enough. Basta daghang PMNs and the intracellular diplococci. Okay? All right. And some other, um, you know, causes of uh, STDs, of course, of Haemophilus ducreyi, gram stain appearance, causes chancroid, that's your soft chancre, na painful, okay? And uh, schools of fish, fingerprint, railroad, railroad track appearance, okay? And another one is we have urea plasma, ure urea liticum, okay? So this is a cell wall deficient bacteria, recall? Cell wall deficient, wala siya cell wall, all right? And... Uh, another iyang kauban ana is mycoplasma na remember pa ba ni hopefully <laughs> diba silang duha mycoplasma and urea plasma wala sila mga cell wall okay and they cause urethritis okay so inflammation of the urethra all right and kanisa na mga colonies or ang urea plasma and mycoplasma they are really small so to visualize their colonies ato silang i microscope latawan ato sila sa microscope all right so yeah uh, and again you expect daw urethritis caused by this organism if makakita kag daghang PMNs, okay? Greater than 5 PMNs, pero walay uh, intracellular diplococci. Okay? Alright. Oh, or walay bacteria. Walay bacteria na makita. Pero daghang polymorphonuclear leukocytes na makita. Okay? Pero walay bacteria, then it may be caused by urea plasma or uh, chlamydia. Okay? Okay. Because again, these are mga special na bacteria. And these are obligate intracellular, kani cell wall deficient. Okay? Please take note. So, muna siya. Alright, and the remaining uh, slides, these are just summary. This is from Bailey and Scott. As you can see, ako na siyang gi, ano. Okay, if ako siyang i-picture from Bailey's, medyo di siya maklaro. So, as you can see, muna siya ato ang summary na giyod. Gikuha ako to mga swab. So, please take note lang on sa mga special instructions, patient prep, container, iyahang, pila ka hours ra siya. Primary plating medium and some comments. All right. So as you can see, most of them less than two hours good or twenty four hours, depending on the need, okay, or depending on the specimen. So as much as possible, that within within two hours, ma transport na to the lab, okay. All right. Okay. Ayan. And some against. Uh, ayan. So still the same. Kung sa mga direct examination ang kailangan, because some of them are you know you look for some organisms. Na you know example mga AFB. Or example, can you put SDA, so fungal, mga infections ba, depending again on the clinical presentation of the, the disease or of the patient, okay? And for the female specimen, ayan, rectal swab, as you can see, mga enteric na culture media. For female specimen, of course, Thayer Martin, we're really looking at Neisseria gonorrhea, and still the same for males. So kung prostate, still the same uh, for prostatitis inflammation, 
Okay? And again, your urethra is still the same for nasal gonorrhea. So as much as possible, guys, ha, please, please memorize, if not familiarize lang yun yourself with the different um, uh, mga instructions. Because this is chapter 5 sa Baileys, okay, and lumalabas sa boards. Like, how do you process this? When say, when say specimen, transport, ani, pila dapat ka-hours, etc., etc. Alright? So, as early as now, try to ano ha, familiarize yourselves with this. Chapter 5 of Bailey and Scots. Okay. Alright, and that's the end of our swab specimens culture. Uh, medyo short lang, pero medyo daganaga po tong chika. So what we're really looking now are organisms that good culture, colonial characteristics uh, from different specimens. Okay, and this time first is swab specimens. And for the remaining pre-recorded lectures, guys, in ani natong way of lecture uh, or in ani natong topic, like we're looking at different specimens and then unsay mga possible kagaw niya, unsay possible kagaw na makitaan, and unsay possible mga colonial characteristics makitaan. Okay, and once mo niya mo makita na kolonial characteristic, then you go now balik na po to biochem para ma-identify yun siya fully, and then lastly AST para makadetermine ka sa yam antibiotics na makawork against niya. Okay, alright, so that's all for our swab specimens culture guys na lecture. I do hope clear ato, and I'll see you in our next pre-recorded lecture. Okay, so thank you dears and have a great day.